I'll take you for a ride on the devil ship. I'll take you for a ride where you sink or swim. Now come with me and let this story begin. <clears throat> Harry, welcome. Thank you very much. Harry, you're here for a reason. Nice to be here. People ask me, uh, where do you get your stock tips? Who's controlling your mind when it comes to uh, the stock market? It's you. So I brought you on because a lot of people have questions. And you even told me that you've noticed online, most people are kind of um, myself. Uh, dumb when it comes to the stock market. Well, that's harsh. Ignor- when it, dumb when it comes to the stock market. Okay. Not in general, even though a lot of people are dumb in general too. <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, so I wanted you to come and explain certain things because now I've, I've been seeing in the news, who's ever buying stocks or who's ever looking at AMC, yes. I've been hearing synthetic uh, shares, uh, naked shorts, yes. uh, all that. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck is it? Okay. What is a naked short? for? Okay, so short, uh, explain the short. shorting right away, not even like getting into the No, market. right away, okay. I got to know. Well, I kind of know now because of you, but I want people to understand. When you're shorting a stock, okay. explain what the difference is between shorting a stock and buying shares. Buying shares is very easy. It's very intuitive. I just, I put my money down and I buy the stock. I have it, okay? Oh. But shorting shares, it's not even selling, it's shorting. Because I'm selling something that I don't actually have. So this is what I find weird. Yes. So you're selling something that you don't actually have. Yes. So you go to your broker. Yes. And you want to buy a bet against a stock. Yes. Like in the stock market, generally speaking, you can't profit from a stock going down. You could just sell the stock you have and avoid the decline. Okay. But some people see that, okay, the, the market's dangerous or this stock looks toppy or frothy and I want to sell it, but I don't have it. So I want to profit from it going down. How do I do that? I short it, which means it happens very simply. Like you go, sh- you press short on your keyboard and it'll short the stock. However, the mechanics behind it are very complicated and that's where there can be problems. Okay? Yeah. So what really happens is I need to sell something I don't have. So I go to my broker and I go, can I borrow this stock, the certificate? Okay. So the broker says, let me locate it. Do I have it in my books? Yes. Do I have it meaning that one of his customers owns shares in it? Yes. Okay. But usually the customer own, doesn't own it in his name. He owns it in the broker's name. So the broker has sort of some control over it. Okay. So the broker says, yes, I have this stock in my inventory. I can lend it to you. Okay. So I take it and then I immediately sell it. And I recognize the profit. I recognize this, the cash, not the okay. profit. So let's say the stock is trading at a hundred bucks and I say, it's too expensive. I want to sell it. So I go to my broker, can I have it? The guy says he gives me the stock, okay? I go, I sell it right away, but now I have the obligation to buy it back whenever the broker says he needs it back. When or, can, is, does the broker decide that or have you decided on terms beforehand? Well, let's say the broker doesn't have a lot of that stock and one of his clients that he, he gave it to you from says, I need it back because I want to sell it. Because you, you, don't, you borrowed the stock, you didn't actually buy it from somebody, okay? So that person, if he wants it back, he can say, I want my stock back. Okay. Or the broker can say, I need that stock back because too many of my clients want to want to sell that stock or they need that stock. Oh. And they, he doesn't have it in his inventory because he lent it to you. Okay. So you have to... You but he lent it to you to it. play against it. That's what I don't get. How are you making money off a stock that's not making money? Who's paying you? Simple, because let's say all things work for the short seller. This is what happens. I go to my broker. I say, I want to I wanna borrow this stock. He has plenty of inventory. He goes, yes. Let's say I want to short... Give me a stock. Uh, I want to short Macy's. Yeah. I think Macy's is too expensive. The guy gives me Macy's stock. I sell it at, let's say, 20 bucks, okay? I sell it at 20 bucks. I get 20 bucks a share, okay? And then Macy's in the course of a month goes down to $15. I say, okay, that's enough. I buy it back at 15. So when I buy it back at 15, I have the share and then I give it back to my broker. So I've I've fulfilled my obligation. Okay. I, he lent it to me. I give it to him back. But you made five bucks off I each share. I made five bucks per share that I, that I borrowed, okay? However, there's a cost to that borrowing. The, the broker makes 5% per year, annualized. So I have to give them 5% over a month, whatever that is. I don't know, less than 1%. So whatever I make of the five bucks, I have to also pay him a percentage of the, it's like a bank lends you money. You still have to give him interest. Yeah. yeah. So he lends you the stock. He expects interest on that. So it depends if the stock is difficult to borrow, the interest rate could be 30% per year, 40, 50. Like with, with AMC at one point, it was like hundred percent interest per year, but they pay it over like two to three days. Okay. That's what happens when everything works out in a short. Okay. But right now we're finding out because the the thing I've heard this week and it's the first time I saw them talking about it on mainstream media. They were asking people, they go, "What's going on with AMC and these naked shorts and synthetic yes. shorts?" Okay, what was going on there is because AMC was a very very special case. It never happened before in the history of finance. Okay, AMC had a short ratio. That means the percentage. AMC or GameStop? 
Uh, excuse me, GameStop. GameStop. Are we talking about AMC now? Or ga- I, I, uh, either I, I, I'm I, saying, I, I, yeah, because the last week the they've two. been talking about synthetic and naked shorting for AMC. But I think this is the same thing that happened with GameStop yeah, anyway. Thank you for thank you for correcting me. You no were worries. correct. It happened in GameStop, but AMC wasn't the case. AMC is also one of those stocks that was shorted a lot. Okay, so people thought that. Let me let me go back first, okay, and explain why people like uh, these uh, Reddit guys wanted to buy these most shorted stocks. Okay? Yeah. The reason they wanted to do that is because they wanted to squeeze the shorts. Okay, now let me give you an example with Macy's again. Okay, let's say I borrow the stock, I sell it at 20, but then the stock starts going up to 21, 22, 25, 30, 35. I sold at 20. Okay, every dollar that it goes up and I have to buy back, I lose money. Right. Okay, if it keeps going up, I will be forced to cover my position because if it goes, if it goes to 40 bucks, I would have to buy it at 40. I lost 20 bucks a share. I lost almost the entire. T- Total value of the shares that I shorted. Almost lost 100%. Because you have to give them back. I have to buy it back and give yeah. it back. And if it keeps going higher, a lot of the people who want the stock will force the guy to sell. To Excuse me, will force the seller to buy back his shares. That forced buying by the shorts will push the stock up even more. Because now I have to buy it to cover my position. Otherwise, I'm losing so much money. So now it looks like the stock is being bought. So yeah. there's action. So the, the short seller is actually helping the buyers and killing himself. Because now all, imagine- that's just The more he's short. buying to cover himself, the more the value is going up, yeah. but now he has to buy more than other short sellers have to do the same thing exactly. and his value is going, okay. Exactly. So, so it's, it's just a, a cycle. Lot, huge cycle. But when that tends to blow off, okay? When all the short sellers get out, you see a huge spike in the stock because they all have to buy back and cover. And then it just starts drifting lower, lower, lower because there's no, no more buying pressure. That's a short squeeze. Okay. And that's what these uh, uh, GameStop and AMC and all these like uh, CCIV, uh, uh, AAL, all these like airline stocks and, and um, cruise ship stocks, they tried to pump them up to, sh- to squeeze the shorts because a lot of people were short those stocks. Short they, meaning betting against. They were betting against, okay? And they knew that if they bu- bought it enough, it'll trigger that short covering that will put the stock even higher, okay? Interesting. And with, with, uh, with game, uh, GameStop, it was unique because the, there was a heck of a lot of shorts, more than any, anyone, any other time. Why was that? Okay, um, because the company was basically going bankrupt. It was a crappy company, okay? It had a lot of debt. It was in, a, in an industry that, it was like, they thought it was the blockbuster of the gaming world, right? Yeah, because gaming is going stores, digital. Like, there's online orders, correct. Amazon, all that. And then yes. these guys are still brick and mortar. Yes, so they thought it was old. But they're still making money overseas with their, some of their, uh, you know, brick and mortar stuff. You know, it wasn't completely a crappy company, but it was crappy enough. A lot of these people, people, hedge funds, smart money, quote unquote, because you know yeah. they're not that smart sometimes. Um, they bet against it. They thought the stock would go bankrupt. So look what happens when you short a stock and it goes bankrupt, okay? With Macy's, if I short it at 20 and it's gonna go bankrupt, it goes to zero. I make the full 20 bucks. I don't have to buy it back. I don't have to buy it back if it goes bankrupt. I win, I get the full 100% return. And even if it didn't, if it went down to a dollar, you have to buy it back for nothing. So I you're making the difference. But if it goes bankrupt, yeah. it disappears from the market. It gets delisted and it's as, it's as if and you, you bought never it have back, to back. You back. never have to cover it because it goes back to zero. And that's what they thought would happen. They thought whatever price they were shorting it at, they thought they would get 100% return. Ah, uh, okay. You understand? Even if I, let's say I, I sell it at a dollar. If it goes to zero, I make 100% of my money, right? I mean, whatever I, whatever I sell, sold it at, I make it. Yeah. So if you put in a million dollars. You, you, they really yeah. leveraged this trade. Right? They put a lot behind it. They put all their money because they thought it was a for sure bankrupt stock, right? So these guys shorted 130% of the float. That means they shorted 130% of the total shares. Okay, now this is what I find confusing. There's 100% of, share, 100% of anything. There's all the shares available. They shorted 30% over what is available. How yes. the fuck is that possible and legal? This, this, these are the things that piss me off. This is possible because one reason, one reason only, people don't understand the mechanics of shorting, mm. okay? When you short a stock, whether it's naked or covered or whatever, we'll get to that later, you are actually increasing the float of the stock. You're creating new shares. Most okay, people don't hold on, understand hold on. That. Because there's a share that exists already, which is a share that you're going to buy. Yes. Now, when you're creating a short share, let's say a short, that's a whole new method. That's a whole new ticket. Yes. So theoretically, if you're shorting a stock at full, you'd be able to go up to 200% because one for each share that exists. Correct. Can you go over 200%? Of course. So it just doesn't matter. You can, you can keep go shorting. forever because every time you short, you create new shares. Ah, oh, that's weird. For, for example, I'll give you, a, I don't know if we get too technical here, but it, it, it sort of blows your mind. It's like, it's like fractional reserve banking where money gets created. Yeah. Well, this is like stock gets created by the same way because you're borrowing something from a broker that hasn't been sold from you. So the broker is like actually creating shares that you're buying. 
But how can this be sustainable, sir? Easily, because you're when you do that, you create new shares. So you always have the original float plus the new shares that you shorted. You can do that forever. You can have 500% short interest in the stock. That means the guy shorted five times the original float and you will have created those 500 shares. Let's, for example, yeah, it gets a little bit complicated, okay? Um, let's say a stock, stock A, has 100 shares total outstanding. That is the float, that is all the shares that it has and it's controlled by person A, okay? You go into the market, you see that stock is trading at, I don't know, 50 bucks and you want to sell it, but you don't have it. So you go to the broker and you say, can I borrow those shares? The broker says, yes, I can lend you 100 shares, okay? You take those shares. You sell them. And you sell them to C, your, your person B. And you sell it to person C. So now person C has 100 shares. You are short 100. And the original person A has 100. So that ex person C who bought the shares bought new shares. This is fucking incredibly Understand? insane. It's crazy. But that's what it is. You just created new shares. Because now C is long 100. A is long 100. And you're short 100. So you're short 100. And C's long 100 cancel each other out, and there's always the original float left. Okay? Okay. So you always, you always have enough shares to cover the short. The, the thing is, you don't know what price you might cover it. If the stock rips, you might have to cover it at 200 bucks, but there will always be enough shares to cover. But if this kind of like the short squeeze happens, yes. and you've invested too much, or your hedge fund, potentially it could put you, you out of business. Too much? You shorted too much? You shorted too much. Yes. Okay. So potentially it could put you out of business. Correct. Because whenever you short something, when you buy, a, for example, when you buy a stock, the most you could lose is what? Whatever you put in. Correct. Yeah. When you short a stock, the most you could lose is? <laughs> Who knows? Depends on uh, how, infinity, much it, yeah, theoretically. how much it goes up. Yeah. yeah, not theoretically infinity, but not practically infinity. Yeah, yeah. Like if this stock is Macy's example, if the stock is 10 bucks or GameStop, the stock was 40 bucks and I shorted it, okay? And the stock went up to 500 bucks. I didn't, if I lost 40, every 40 I lose, it's 100% loss. Yeah. You lost way more than that if that's what you did, yeah. I lost like 800, what is it? I don't know. Nine times my, nine, 10, 12, 12 15 times my money. Yeah, that's crazy. I never lose 100%. I could lose 1,500%, okay? And that's what happened with these guys. They were shorting and it, it turned out, but they, it turned out a 1% short in their, in their account. It's just a 1% position. Wiped them out. That's why all these hedge funds had to cover these other guys, other hedge funds had to come in and bail them out. Because they put so much in and they didn't expect they didn't this expect much you of lose it. Forever. You can't yeah. lose 100% when you short. You can lose 200%, 300, 400, 500. They lost 10, 20, a lot, of, a lot of their money. So is it good that people on Reddit got together and they said, fuck these assholes? Yeah. They're, they're playing the game in a weird way. We're going to play the fucking game in a weird if way. If it's legal, it's, it's legal. legal. 100%. If they're, yeah. allowed, they're allowed to do it, yeah. they're allowed to do it. Why not? If they see an inefficiency in the market, I would have I done the same. In fact, Reddit, are not, Reddit is not the only reason... Uh, GameStop went to 500. They just like to blame Reddit. Well, I mean, they were the catalyst, let's say, but you know what? It wasn't just Reddit. It was a lot of hedge funds who made that trade too. They saw a vulnerability in the hedge fund. I forgot the name of it. That was long, the, that was short, these stocks. So they went, they piled in billions too. There are hedge funds that made billions off of the GameStop trade. And I'm sure there are hedge funds, we'll see it later, that made millions and billions off the AMC trade. AMC went from what, nine bucks to 70? Yeah, I was in I'm at sure. nine. Perfect, beautiful. You know, and those things are like, they go parabolic. You don't know when it's going to stop, you know? It usually stops at the maximum pain point and then it just tanks. So so right now, what do you think? You still, th you, from what you told me though, it's funny because you understand this and you know that people could make a lot of money, but always your advice to me has been not to get involved in these kind of crazy situations, get involved in sure things. Well, there's, nothing, there's not a sure thing, but you want to get involved in things that where the risk reward is in your favor. For me, at least five to one. Okay? But you could get involved in those things, but treat them as trades and get out. You'll never get out at the top. Okay, If you can take 50% of the move, you're a genius. Like, you know, I had GameStop, but I didn't get out at 500. You know, I think I got my last shares out at like 105. I thought it was a genius because then it tanked to like 50, 60 or something and then it ripped to like over a week to 500 after, uh, I think it was a pre-market or aftermarket, but it was trading in the, in the regular market at 400 bucks. That's crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's life-changing if you're in it, you know, yeah. but you have to take your profits. I mean, it was a once in a lifetime thing. If you continue to like hold forever, like hodl, like whatever, you're never going to make money. It's the best guys always sell when everybody else wants to buy. Yeah. That's you, what you told me. Yeah. yeah. 
you and you said to. when the mainstream media starts talking about something, it's too late. It's probably too late. <laughs> yeah. You're in the dying legs. You know? yeah. Like the best time to buy GameStop was in, I don't know, last year, September, when it was like flat and doing nothing, you know? And the worst time to buy is when everybody is buying it. Yeah, know? when it was in the news. Yeah. <laughs> when it was 100, 200, 300. Well, when I heard about it, it was in the 100 range. I didn't know what was going on before. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, who knew that it was going to go to 500? I mean, you could have made money on a, on a trade, you know, like get out and after two days, you know? Yeah. But that would be gambling because you don't know. How, we're talking that it, we're talking now after the fact. But isn't all this gambling in a way? If you're buying, if you're buying during that parabolic phase, it, no. But selling, in general, let's gambling. talk. I understand that you put a lot of research into what you do. However, the we don't call you, it gambling in the stock market. We call it speculation. Yeah, it, but it is gambling. I'll tell you why. Yes. Because you, the logic is not always in control. Like correct. You'll see things where you're like, wait, I don't understand what's going on. Like we were talking about gold and silver, for example. Yes. It, gold will go up, but the miners won't. Although, go, like yes. weird things. It's like yes. who's controlling this? How can this be possible? Yes. How if gold is going up, the people getting the gold, well, their value should go up too. Not today, yes. Junior. Yes. Like it's we're just deciding as we go along. Yes. Why though? Who who? How does this happen? It's the markets are forward discounting mechanisms. Okay. The, if you're talking about what's going on now. Okay, and you're trading about what happened now or two days ago, you're already too late. You should have made that trade six months ago. The market right now is going to trade based on what's happening six months in the future. If you're trading about newspaper headlines now, you will lose, I guarantee it. You have to know what will happen in the future and how things are set up. Right. right? And that's very difficult. Okay, it requires like, for me, the way I trade, I have a very specific style. Okay, it's, it's like a hybrid style, but I like to look at the macro view of things, where things will go, generally speaking. And then go to the middle and then go down, knock it down even more to the company level, okay? Like for me, I, I, I like to have a view of what's going on in the future, okay? And like you told me, you were telling me you see the future right now. Everyone's serious about clean energy, about uh, different ways of uh, food, of making clean food and all that. So yes. you, you try to find the best companies that are working or they're researching to make a better future with keeping those kind of pillars in mind. Yes. So you find stuff that, yeah, right now it's easier to buy in, yes. but they're the ones with the highest potential if this trend continues, if right. that's where we're going. Okay. Let me give you an example of what I did six months ago and how it panned out to today. Okay. Okay. Six months ago, um, when Biden got in, the theme, the general theme was now we're going to have the Biden play. Okay. The Biden stocks will go up. So what does that mean? That means that stocks like uh, clean energy, because he's going to put a lot of money into the Green New Deal, okay, those stocks are going to probably rip, okay? And what what is going to also do well is reflation trade, because he's going to spend a lot of money. He's going to do a lot of fiscal spending, trillions of dollars, okay, with the Green New Deal. So, and the economy opening up after COVID, because when he was, he's the president, he's going to slowly try to open up the economy to make it look good, you know? Uh, at least we hope we hope that was the case, right? Yeah. So, at that that's going to be very inflationary, Okay. But back in October or, no, or November, things were not acting like there was going to be an inflation trade. People were still worried that the stock market is going to crash again, that we have to be worried about another second wave of COVID. So at the time, nobody thought there was going to be inflation or the thing opening up, okay? So at the time, I bought uh, bank and oil stocks because when inflation happens, oil is the first thing that, that pops, okay? And bank stocks because if inflation happens, interest rates go up in long-term bonds and to compensate. Banks may more, make more money. Correct. Banks make more money when interest rates are higher. Okay, so that's what I, that's the key that, that I bought. Okay, um, the new buys. That, but it took six months, and now I got rid of those. I don't have. I have almost nothing. I bought Exxon Mobil and I bought Citigroup as my, my bank plays, and I, and I bought um, BP for my oil. Two stocks for my oil and one stock for the bank play. Okay, and um, those stocks now went up a lot. Okay. We've reached the point where interest rates went up too. Like if you see the interest rate, bonds were tanking. So interest rates on the, t in the 10 year went up from like, uh, what was it? 0 0.8, 0 0.9 to 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, which is a huge move in a three month period for a bond it's supposed to be safe because they were expecting inflation. So everybody's talking now, like you told me past month, everybody's talking about inflation. Yeah. We're going to go crazy inflation. We're going to have food prices. We're going to... But, oh, I also bought a, a food index back in the DBA, which is an agricultural fund because food prices were going to go up, okay? Now that everybody's talking about it, six months later, you see? You have to invest before for the six months. Then you look like an idiot. Yeah, you oh, were telling me this in the fall. Uh, yeah, yeah, October, November. And I could buy a crap load of any oil stock that I wanted. Oil stocks, oil, the price of oil was going up and the price of oil stocks was going down. Yeah, yeah I remember that. And, 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 which again, that kind of stuff doesn't make sense to me. Exactly, okay? It's just, it's setting up, it's telling you that nobody wants it. But if you looked at the future, if you took a, and you 
controlled your risk. Okay, you, that's a huge thing. If you're wrong, and you have to bet big when you're right, but you have to control your risk. Okay, so I did it through long, longer term options. So I, I know exactly how much I was willing to bet for my portfolio to, to, uh, on each one. I, I could sleep at night. I don't care what happened. If I took a loss, I'm going to lose X amount. If I took a win, I'm going to make, you know, a lot more. Okay, so the risk reward for me before I take a trade is five to one minimum. Especially like I expect to lose X, then I should make five X. Right. Okay. But over time, it doesn't happen immediately. It happens for three to six months. Okay. And right now I've sold all my banks. I'm, I have almost, I had like 300 shares of Exxon. I had way more. Okay. I have nothing. I'm basically out of the inflation trade. I think the inflation trade now is dead. Everybody's talking about it. And I actually believe the Federal Reserve and Powell that says that inflation is going to be transitory for now, for now. Okay. So that's how I position myself now. Where we're going to have how a are they going to control that? What do you mean? How are they going to control inflation? How do they control it? There's only one way to control it. No, no, right inflation. now, like moving forward, this thing's going to be Well, because trans- it's not really inflation that was pushing up these prices, okay? Because inflation was 2 3%, okay? What really pushed up these prices were because the economy was closed, they were having bottlenecks. Okay. You see, the price of lumber in April went up 60% in one month. That's not inflation. That's because we couldn't get the supply and the and the price went up to, to deal with the supply demand factors of that lumber market. Same thing with the, with the food. The food was also going up, not just due to inflation, but because of supply shortages. So it was the internal supply demand dem- dynamics of the market, given that the economy was closing up and trying to open up and you can't open up everything so fast, that you're going to have these problems. So it's not really inflation. I mean, prices went up, but inflation to me is money printing, you know, and the price is going up because of money printing. I mean, if it was real inflation, you would see lumber prices going up 60%, but everything else going up 60% too. That would be like hyperinflation. But no, it was just for the lumber market. Just I don't think we have to worry about hyperinflation. No, no, I think no. that's a Impossible. fear tactic. It, There's no. It would have to go really quick. Hyperinflation is wheelbarrow. No, but f- hyperinflation is like uh, your cup of coffee now costs 106. Like hyperinflation yeah, exactly. is, I think they're just using that word to scare people. Exactly. So when you get to that point where everybody's saying we're going to have hyper- inflation, inflation, hyperinflation, uh, the food prices are so expensive, you'd know we reach the top. Yeah, we've already made the inflation trade. Bonds went up, interest rates went up in the ten year from like I said, I think it was 0.8.9 to one point seven. That's a huge move. And now it's now if you look at the chart of of uh, the U.S. ten year, if you can put it up, you know, Poseidon could put that up. Poseidon, if you could put you put uh, U.S. ten Y. Poseidon's got his trade view up there. Uh, people don't know this about Poseidon, but he's, he's, on. yeah, he has his glasses on. He's uh, he's a wizard. Yeah. Yeah. I can't really see it. So. No, we, we just we just trust you. We believe you. But you'll, you'll see you'll see the the U.S. ten year yield going up tremendously from uh, January to to April, and then it flatlines. And during those times, from the past month, you see crazy inflation um, newspaper articles and pundits and people going on. We're going to go go through crazy inflation, right? And guess what? The ten year did nothing. If you if they were if it was true, you would see the ten years sp- the yield spiking even higher. So you see that. They're talking a, a crap load about inflation, and yet it's not moving the actual market. Yet. But why? This one I don't get. Why are they so late? How is it possible that they don't see this? While is it done on purpose? Well, they just see what has happened. They're 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 looking towards the past. They're like walking backwards, you know. And they're saying, "Oh, look what's happening." Oh, and then the prices go up. They don't see what's happening in the future. You have to trade Strange. what's more likely going to happen in the future. So it's not the news that is important. It's the market's reaction to the news. So when you get a lot of bullish inflation uh, stories, and you see things that should go up with inflation flat or starting to go down, that means there's no more reaction to it. The market has already priced it in. Okay. So the only way to go now is the opposite. And everybody says, no way we are. So I said for the past month, I said the inflation trade is dead and we're going back to the transitory inflation. So we're going to see rates go down, I think. I'm betting this way. Rates are going to go down. You're talking about American. Uh, America. Oh, I was talking about America, sorry. Because they're the, the, the driver. Yeah. Okay? And I usually bet in America. Okay. Although I do have a lot of resource plays in Canada, which I love, you know? Yeah, we do. But that, that to me is like, I position my portfolio for a falling interest rate environment, falling inflation for the next three to six months. I didn't say for the next year or whatever, because we don't know. I'm just saying for the next small amount of time, which for me is three to six months. I position that rates are going to go down. We're going to see tech doing well again, because tech got beaten up when inflation was going up. Yep. Some stocks are down 50%. Good tech stocks are down 50%. So I think tech, I position myself some tech. So that kind of stuff, you know, things that will benefit from falling interest rates and falling inflation. And what about, because the resource play that we're, we're is that yes. a future play? Yes. 
because <clears throat> like uh, I talk a lot about uranium to people. I only learned about uranium from you. Yes. Uh, I had no idea how much it was already being used. When I first started speaking yes. to you about uranium, I thought it was some kind of a, you know, there's like three factories on the planet and they're trying to make weapons. I had no idea <laughs> how many. Well, that's true too. Pla- that's true too, but I, had, I, hadn't, I didn't have any idea also about how, in terms of what we want from clean energy, if you do it right, yes. if you put the actual resources behind it and you and you run it properly, how clean it is and how much energy we get from such little uranium. Correct. Now, is this something that's catching on with places? Is that why uranium is slowly going higher and higher? Yes. I mean, you did your homework, right? Like, yeah. you surprised me. You, you you really do your research and you're really a smart person. You put your mind to everything. That's an uh, exaggeration. Uh, <laughs> you, like, because you came at me with this as well. You say, Harry, what about this thing? I heard this mine was closing. And I go, yeah, you're yeah. correct. What, what is the overall impact of that? You're getting into the nitty gritty of the um, supply demand fund, uh, dynamics of uranium. Well, it's a very specialized market, okay, first of all. It's not, it's not, everything's not in the open market. It's not traded in, in, in the spot market, which we will. A lot of contracts are done on the uh, over-the-counter market between utilities and, uh, and um, the users of uranium and the, and the miners of uranium, okay? It's a lot of, it's a very specialized market. However, I've been in it since 2018, and I believe that the supply-demand fundamentals are such that... Um, the price has to go up eventually, or we're not going to we're going to stop using uranium. Okay, I I love uranium. I think it's the most energy dense fuel out there. We should be using it a lot. It is super clean. It is the safest form of energy. How, ever. But that only here's a, here's including the argument. Chernobyl and Fukushima, including that. It's but it only the but the argument is valid. You're right. Only if we don't take into account human error because so far all of the like the worst thing that's ha- that's happened with uranium yes. accidents have been human error Correct. or laziness even fukushima so but fukushima i'll put a little asterisk on fukushima not really yeah. there has been no deaths from a uranium meltdown in fukushima all the deaths were from the uh, tsunami that happened okay no deaths okay. but still having radioactive water that's not good no right? it's not good <laughs> that's not good but i just mean th- these things could have been avoided had we done humans a better job yes but it looks like we always try even though we know that it's dangerous to cut corners yes. instead of doing it right so long term we're Correct. better off so that's the, the yes. that's what you, uranium you're right yes. about everything you said about the energy but that's what i think people are hesitant about because they go that's the fear, yes. every time we do it some asshole is going to screw us over <laughs> yes. and i get him because i look at it historically like yeah there's always someone who's going to ruin it for everyone the only th- the only nuclear meltdown that happened was in uh, in uh, what was that um, in the soviet um, uh, not Fukushima, but Chernobyl, sorry, Chernobyl. And that was because it was a wartime uranium pl- um, reactor that they don't build anymore. It, it, it was me- it's a positive feedback reactor that it, it increased the chain reaction. When they try to upgrade the fuel, it increases the chain reaction. That So things got worse than they were. And literally, that was the worst that could ever happen. The, the core was literally on fire. Jesus. It can't get worse than that. Uh, people died. Like that's that's, people died that's guaranteed life. explosion. And it didn't. It just... it it. It's not a, a nuclear bomb. It's a nuclear reactor, right? It's it's not weapons grade uh, plutonium that's used to fuel these reactors, right? It's uranium. It, you cannot have a nuclear mushroom cloud on a on a, <laughs> in a nuclear uh, reactor, okay? For commercial purpose, for electricity purposes, okay? Uh, there, it was just a, a meltdown that completely screwed it up. It was terrible. It, it, they cut corners of the Soviet Union because the Soviet Union was like losing money and right they were like losing the war the Cold War and they were just cutting corners and even then the people who yeah I heard died, it was it was like um they were grasping at straws they were like nah nah it's like yeah. a duct tape scenario okay. it'll exactly, work exactly exactly yeah. and and the worst case scenario happened Fuck. I think a two hundred people died of like throat cancer which if they had the medicine they could easily cure it it was like the easiest form of to cure it now form of, but we didn't know that yeah then. then then yeah then we had the pills to do it okay oh really yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was just a complete incompetence, okay? That will never happen again because we don't make reactors like that anymore. It's The technology has advanced so much that it's so safe now that the moment something bad happens, it just shuts down. It'll never get to the point where it gets to the point where it will melt down, okay? And there were no nuclear meltdowns like ever. Even Three Mile Island, didn't, didn't, there was no nuclear meltdown. The fear that we have of that is because of the movies of mushroom clouds and like the environmental movement wants to like demonize it for so long. It, it, it's... It really Does the environmental movement still want to demonize it? Because if it's done well, it's the best thing we could it do. It is the best thing ever. And there are some elements in the in the uh, environmental movement who actually see the potential of nuclear, and they see how safe it is, because we have tremendous advances in the past 60 years. Yeah. It's not the 1960s reactors anymore. They're 
we can make small modular reactors that you put on every corner of the block and it'll be super safe. And we'd have like abundant energy, super cheap. It's really like the future. Well, we could have now theoretically, uh, like you know how we have hydroelectricity? Yes. We can have a reactor outside of the city, not even close, Correct. far, sending us energy and yes. it will be cheaper. Yes. And it will power us for longer. Yes. 100%. With l less uranium than the amount of energy we need to get from all the water. Is that true? Correct. That's 100% that's true. And the other argument is that it's, what are we going to do with the waste? It's nuclear waste. We can get... As far as I read, that. we can actually, the half-life, the way it works is you can, like it, it creates waste and then you could reuse that. Yes. But then you reuse a little bit of it and there's still some waste coming over, coming out of it. And then so you reuse some of that? Reuse and there's still some waste. Uh, so... Literally, the entire waste of every nuclear rea uh, a reactor that has been produced over the past X amount of years, like 50, 60 years, is the size of a football field. And I think... Uh, but which is not, not good. Which is nothing. It's nothing, but it's not good either. But but what I heard is also the big problem there, and this I didn't just hear, I read, and again, it goes to human error. The way we're disposing them yes. is like all kind of nonchalant. No, that's so not true. So we're... No, there's... All, in the States right now, in, in the US, there's... Um, Fuck, what's the, what's, I forget the word about it. Even Alex Jones talked about it, about how they're just not taking the, pro if they would take the proper care, it wouldn't be an issue. But it's kind of like, you know, there's nuclear waste. We know it's there in this barrel or whatever the hell it is, but they're not really taking care of it. They're just trying to dig up holes and put them in. So if we were doing things right, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yes. But the problem is these companies, can we trust them when we're looking away to not cut corners and put us in some kind of danger, whether it's our health, uh, well, Let's say that's true. That a yeah. lot of that they're cutting us tremendous corners and nothing. Where are all the deaths of nuclear energy? We we would see them somewhere coming out, okay? And we would see like even what about destroying crops or you know just I've, I've seen nothing. I've seen none of that. I've seen no no adverse effects of that. It, I mean, look at Chernobyl. They said we would can never go to Chernobyl for fifty thousand years or twenty thousand. That was more of a tourist thing. They meant <laughs> you don't want to go to Chernobyl. You didn't before. But now they're going for tourist destination Chernobyl. <laughs> there's no there's no re like people are afraid of radiation because we don't understand it. Okay, but I'm afraid of it because I feel, feel like I do understand it and it scares the <laughs> shit out of me. <laughs> yeah, but to me, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Of, like you, you give. You're up not radiation. afraid of radiation. I'm afraid of radiation, but I'm not afraid of nuclear energy. Okay, okay, no, okay. Uh, yeah. Yes, if if somebody doses me with radiation, I mean, you get more radiation flying on an airplane than you would if you're in a nuclear power plant. And like I heard this, is 20, this true? Twenty times more or something. Like that. It's like it's an astronomical. Yeah, because you're close to the sun. There's less. There's less of the atmosphere blocking the rays, and you're getting more. You're getting. X-rays, like if on, on a plane going from here to Greece, let's say for eight hours, you're fine. You know, it's like. What well, speaking of X-rays, what about in the? Um, I heard that some European countries are against those. You know, those scanners at the airport where they just X-ray you. You ever been? Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I heard that uh, some European country like, yeah, we gotta stop. You just go through the metal detector because uh, it's, it's dangerous. They say it's dangerous. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't know the specifics of that. I was wondering if you knew. No, I have no idea about that. But like to me, like even environmentalists are coming on board. Uh, not, that, not the cuckoo crazy ones, but the ones that are reasonable, they say, yeah, well, there's no other way to get to zero carbon emissions if that's your goal. Yeah. If you want zero emissions, you know, that is the only way now. We have nothing else. We can't do windmills. We can't, it's the footprint of a windmill. It's very inefficient. It can only survive due to subsidies from the government. In Germany, they tried it. It's, it's a failure. The, the, the average electricity bill under this experiment that they did, like 20% of something of their, of their uh, capacity, uh, electrical capacity is like uh, wind and solar, okay? And it doesn't work half the time, okay? They, they, they shut down their, their nuclear power plants and they replace them with uh, more coal plants to, to, to kick in when, when the wind and solar doesn't... doesn't coal? Yeah. Isn't that the so opposite of zero more, emissions? Yeah, they're, burning more, they're burning more emissions now than they were before. It's like, it's terrible. They have to import energy from France and from uh, Poland, I think. Uh, and those are, have, uh, those are like, France is like 70% nuclear. Oh, so, really? See, yeah, things I didn't know. Skies, yeah, cleanest skies ever. It's like, uh, and look, look at all the nuclear, they have some of the cleanest water and, and earth and whatever. Did it contaminate the water? Is it contaminate? No. It's just a- it's As long as you do it properly. Way. Correct. And you could easily do it properly. It's, it's not a big deal to do to not do- Because you're going to make your money anyway. You're selling energy. Yeah. To, yeah. yeah. The biggest cost of a nuclear power, to build a nuclear power plant is regulation, excessive regulations. If you- But that's a good, if you're going to regulate- Regulations are a good thing. If you're going to regulate something. Or not, yes, you're right. You should regulate it. Yeah. But like the regulations for a coal plant, which is much more polluting- and much uh, more uh, uh, radioactive. Like their coal dust is so radioactive that it, it has no half-life. It's there forever in some cases, okay? And the margin of safety for, a, to meet the margin of safety to build a coal plant is let's say this much, okay? A small, small amount. For nuclear energy, they made it this much. You have, to, you have to pass like 50 hurdles compared to the coal plant, which is more dirty, more 
uh, more radioactive actually. And not to mention like for, for the green energy, like for wind and solar, in order to make those things, you have to mine a lot of these dirty metals, a lot of these like radioactive metals that are, it's very dirty that mining, okay? It's very bad for the environment. So like there is nothing that is perfect. We have to, we have choices in life. You have to decide. You have to balance the good and the bad. And to me, like the best form of energy by far, if done correctly, like you said, is nuclear energy at the, at the moment. Okay. Now you shouldn't do hundred percent nuclear. Like you still need to have redundancies. You should do some natural gas. You should have some hydro. You should Just in case. Yeah. You know, and, uh, so you worry about Quebec. Quebec has so much hydro. We're, we're lucky that we have hydro in Quebec. Yeah. So we don't need nuclear you're saying or nuclear well, wouldn't I mean, hurt? It would be nice because I mean, what's the evil, what's the evil of hydro is that you destroy the environment to dam up everything and like, yeah. the rivers and the, the wildlife and whatever, but that's up north. So because we don't see it, it's okay, right? <laughs> that's the beauty about Quebec. Everything is like so up north that we don't get to see the damage that we're doing and yet we're getting like very cheap energy because of it and environmentally friendly, quote unquote, in terms Here. of CO2 emissions yeah, in Quebec. But you can't have hydro everywhere. I say where you can do it, do hydro, that's okay. But where you can't, I would say do a lot of nuclear and then the rest to fill in the blanks, do natural gas for now. You know, that's my mix of how things should be if you if you care about <laughs> global emissions you know if you don't then if you don't then do whatever you call it's cold cheapest. yeah <laughs> cheap, you know? yeah. Oh, but that'll ruin us what about so we've talked about gold a bit yes. uh i don't understand so gold was something that everybody used to tell me growing up that's the safe bet you put your money in gold and then i'm not saying it's not the safe bet now but i feel like these numbers don't make any sense like whenever you think gold should go up or gold miners should go up and then silver i keep hearing well silver's always going to rally behind mm -hmm. four times three times as much as gold goes up but i haven't this past year i really haven't seen that no. i've seen both gold and silver act erratically so i'm like is there are there decisions being made that are keeping these manufactured prices for now and then they're going to adjust or is it just that i don't understand how they should be uh, valued are you saying is there Gold manipulation happens. That's what I'm banks. saying, but in, in, I'm trying to say it a long way yeah. just so I don't get uh, misunderstood. But I do feel like they're manipulating. The, I, I feel like the stock market gets manipulated a lot, but I do feel like the price of gold and silver are 100% being manipulated. Even when I, I started looking into, one of my friends sent me a thing about quantum computing. Yes. He's uh, heavily invested in different things. And he told me, dude, because uh, I mentioned gold, and he goes, well, gold, the, way I, the reason why I see its value in the future, he goes, is because of quantum computing. I was like, I don't, why would one go with the other? And he's like, well, these computers are made of solid gold. And I was like, no, they're not. That's just, that's a meme. And they started sending me articles. I had no idea that they're making computers out of salt. And I, wait, is this like a Saudi Arabian play? Like they're just, <laughs> but no, because I guess the conductor, what, however the fuck it works, it's the best way to yes, do things. Yes, but it's expensive, right? So they use silver instead. Because, okay. Yeah, or copper or something. Like that. So how the fuck is that going to work in the future? Because if you need, let's say the government needs the best ever, they're going to probably spend money to build these giant computers made of solid fucking gold. So when the aliens come down, they think <laughs> we're insane. How does that how does that fit into the equation in terms of gold? Like is gold, first is of all, is gold, gold being... Quantum computer? Uh, gold. Is gold right now, am I crazy or is it being manipulated to be held back? The short answer to the question is Yes. There is being manipulated. However, they, I mean, it's, it's a fact because a lot of traders have been caught in, you know, in the bullion banks like JP Morgan and all these, like, even Scotiabank has been. Oh, really? Yeah, these cocksuckers. Yeah. So, yes, they've been fined, but it's just a short term thing. It can only affect the price in the short term. In the longer term, they can't, they can't really affect it. I mean, when gold went up from 2002, I think it was $300 an ounce to like $1,900 an ounce by 2010, was that manipulation? upwards <laughs> no i mean yes there is manipulation but not enough to affect the long-term trend of it okay and yes there is a lot of like uh, gold is affected by the paper market there's a lot more paper contracts futures contracts affect the price of gold more than anything like if the if they weren't there then maybe gold would be higher now we don't really speculating and people say maybe if people didn't buy bitcoin they would buy gold more and that would and drive that would, up the price but the thing is is if you want to trade gold, if you want to know anything about gold, there's only one thing and one thing only you should look at, and that's real interest rates. People think that gold is uh, affected by inflation. Like we were saying, like we saw inflation go up between November and uh, now, and how come gold tanked hard? Gold, it's bullshit. Gold, it's being manipulated down. Go, yeah. No, because gold does not follow inflation. That does, it's not a good correlation if you look historically. If you do, the, if you do the, the regression analysis, you see the correlation is not very high between gold and inflation. Okay? Because inflation... I mean, gold works with real interest rates and inflation is just one component of real interest rates. And what I mean by real interest rates, it's the nominal interest rate, the interest rate that you see quoted minus inflation equals the real interest rate. 
So you have to look at inflation, but you have to look at the, inf the interest rates that's happening outside right now. Okay? So you could have a period where inflation goes up and gold goes down. You could have periods where inflation goes up and gold goes up. It depending on how the interest rates are moving, so that it affects the real interest rate. But I have never seen a situation where real interest rates go up and gold goes up. Because there's, there's almost a perfect inverse relationship between gold and real interest rates. So real interest goes down, that's when gold starts going up. Correct. Think about it. Why? Because if you're getting less of a real return and it goes to negative, gold holds its value. It stays like that constant forever. So why would I go for a negative real rate when I could have a zero rate in gold yeah, yeah. and maintain my power? Okay? So if interest rates go up to 1%, 2%, 3% positive, why would I hold gold? I will just put it into, into financial assets or real estate or something else because I'm going to get a real return, whereas gold will not give me a real return. So it makes perfect sense. Okay? So you have to look at real interest rates. Forget about everything else. So we had a period where inflation went up during the Biden play, the inflation trade, and gold went down. Why? Because the interest rate went up higher than inflation. So real rates actually went up during this period. People were slamming their there are fists on the table. I go, I can't believe gold is going down. I bought a lot of gold and inflation is going up. It should be an inflation edge. Nobody. You just don't know. If you would look at real rates and they were going up, you would have sold your gold. <laughs> you know? But now it's a different situation. Now we have a situation where I think the, the in inflation trade is dead and interest rates are going to go down again because people were bidding up interest rates, uh, the 10-year, which I look at the 10-year bond as a, as a benchmark for interest rates and gold. Okay, And I compare that with the inflation rate to get real rates. So when you see the inf uh, when you see that inflation is going down, but the interest rates are going to go down faster, then real rates are going down, and that's why I think now, even though there might not be as high inflation as people think, I think interest rates are going to go lower faster, and gold and precious metals should benefit for the next three to six months. But really benefit or they've already benefit gold has got they've already benefited because they've gone down like uh, uh, the real rate has gone down in the past a month or so. And gold went from about seventeen hundred. It's now it's eighteen seventy. It made a big run already. I haven't seen it in my miners though. The no. gold miners aren't feeling the heat. The, the majors, yes, the majors made a nice run. Oh really? And I made I made some money there. But the juniors always lag. The juniors in the midterms always lag. But they in the end they make a bigger move. Okay. Okay. So even if you didn't look at inflation all that stuff, you could just look at the major gold miners. If you see them ripping, you can just start buying the uh, the juniors. If you want, because you know there's going to be a lag eventually. And then they're going to make, and then you could sell. Okay? So this is what I'm doing. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm saying this is how I view the world. You know? As far this as I, like, I, 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 like don't, don't do it. what I'm doing. This like, is, this, this is, this is this what is you should mindset. be doing. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm just copying you. But you don't have to, for, you can forget gold. I mean, if you think, it's, like, I think interest rates are going down, I would buy, uh, I would buy the, uh, the 20 year bond because I think it's going up in price because interest rates go down, the price of bonds goes up. So I also bought TLT which is a, a, a 20 year bond fund invest in the 20 year bonds. I think it's going to go up with interest rates going down. You don't have to buy it. You can buy tech stocks. They, they benefit when interest rates go down. So you don't have to play gold. You can play it in a multitude of ways. I'm talking about the theme that I'm playing. Yeah. Okay? But if, if I'm wrong, all those things I'm going to, I'm going to lose. I, I'm, I'm going to lose money. Okay. But you know, talk to me in three to six months. We'll see where we're at. And maybe we change our minds, you know? I think you're going to be at a good spot. So far, what you've told me long term, it kind of plays out for me. It works. Plus, I always have like multiple options. You don't just give me one. You're like, just in case this doesn't work out, this works out. And right. overall, I'm on top. Even if one goes down, the other one's going to go up enough to make up for the loss of the other. What about, I don't, it's not like that everywhere, but in Montreal, the last year, another shocking thing that happened was the real estate market. Mm. So people were out of work. Mm -hmm. uh, companies were closing down. People were working remotely. And yet, the real estate market here exploded. It started going up so fast, it was unmanageable. Yes. People, by the time they would put in their offer, a few minutes later, they, look, by the time this goes in, you might want to go 100,000 over or else they're not. And like, what? What are you talking about? The, what, so I don't understand here how this happened because fundamentally looking at it, if I would look at it without thinking of external factors, I'm not. if I don't mention uh, Chinese nationals buying up stuff and all that, if I don't mention any of that, yes. if I just look at it locally, I knew that people weren't were already complaining that they weren't making a lot of money in Montreal, okay? In compare, you know, with the taxes all that. Now people were out of work. Companies were also closing down, and yet more and more uh real estate started to get bought up uh at higher and higher prices. And be, so I'm like, wait, if we don't have money, how are we buying this? If I'm not taking into consideration the the Chinese nationals. Yes, forget the forget yeah. the, you're right. But but the Chinese nationals did add before, but not now. 
No, yes, but not. But you're right. But you see how counterintuitive it is. Yeah. Okay, let's go back. Okay. Um, the 2020 pandemic in March, uh, when the market fell 35 percent in two weeks, <laughs> like in a yeah, month, yeah. right? It was very, it was panicky. You know, I I was panicking. I lost money too there. Um, it was because of like the, the the pandemic and they closed down the economy, correct? But this is the first recession. And by the way, recession is defined as uh, the market going down, I don't know, you can many ways to define it, negative GDP for two quarters straight or the market going down by 20%, we're in a, we're in a recession or co- um, correction or whatever you want to call it. Um, so what the first, the first time, for the first time in history, this is the first recession where personal income went up. During it. Yes. Why? Because the government stepped in with a bazooka, a nuclear bomb. They came in and they started the Fed, not just the Fed doing QE, which is the Fed printing money and giving it to the banks. But okay. giving it to actual people. The government now was giving it to actual people. Okay. The government was at stimmy, stimmy checks, right? Yeah. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Stimulus checks. Okay. But also they, the, the Federal Reserve was actually buying bonds, buying junk bonds, making sure that the market wasn't going to tank anymore. They were going to say uh, unlimited printing to buy the bonds because we're, we're going to reflate this market because their biggest fear is deflation. They don't want a, a repeat of the Great uh, Depression. Nobody does. Okay, that was like starvation. The, but that w- if that would happen now, that would affect the entire globe uh, in an uh, immeasurable, immeasurable oh, yeah. way. Because yeah. the debts are much higher now and there'll be a huge crash. And the Fed knows this. So not only that, but they told the government, you have to start buying stuff too. You have to start spending into the economy, fiscal spending, we call it, okay? Not just monetary, which is the Fed, the central bank, but also government. So you had a two-pronged nuclear bomb of a reaction to the pandemic, okay? And that's why here too in Canada, the government- Canada, oh my God, they spent a, a, yeah. a crap load. They spent more. However, Canada was in better shape before than the States in terms of debt to GDP. So even though after Trudeau spent a crap load of money, we're still at a, it's high, but it's way better than the States. The States is like- 125% of GDP, debt to GDP, or debt to GDP. And Canada's like 60, which is much better. 60, 65, I can't remember, uh, maybe some around that number, maybe 70, but around 60, let's say. Um, but it went from 20 to 60, like in a trip. Yeah, well, so, the world stopped. Yeah. Uh, but the, the states, that's why everybody during the pandemic who lost, my, who lost their job actually had more disposable income during that time than in other recessions, than they had when they were working. And that's why the markets ripped back as they just put everything back into these stocks, right? They wanted to be like Wall Street. They wanted to like increase their wealth. And I don't blame them. That's where the money was. And a lot of these stocks were ripping for no reason. So that's why we had a V-like recovery. You know? Yeah. And that's what you're saying. It makes no sense that real estate in Canada, uh, why is real estate going up? Well, I'm, I'm wondering when, just when in, in Montreal because I live here. Because everybody got free money. I mean, we have friends that tried to buy houses, right? Yeah. Go right there. Yeah. 20% over ask. Yeah, he's losing his mind. Right? Yeah, they're they're going crazy. Why? Yeah. Because they're getting people are getting free money, and they're sp- they're trying to spend it on real goods now, and that's what's happening. So even though they they lost their jobs, they had more money than they had before. So they're they're going to bid interest. They're going to bid real estate up. Now let me ask you a question. I have a question before okay. you ask me the question. Okay, I'm with you on this, yes. but now these interest rates. No Chinese. Buy no Chinese. I'm talking about locals. So now these interest rates they were um, uh, a good catalyst, and you had some extra money. Sometimes. Things have to then regulate themselves. So, aren't the interest rates? Why do they have to regulate themselves? Well, you can't just be going what right? You have to. Isn't that how everything works? No. Oh, they don't have to. We're living in different times now. But go ahead. Okay, but no, as far as I understood, is things have to regulate. So basically, there's, a, there's always a pullback. So let's say interest rates are low today. It does not mean that they're going to be low tomorrow. So while the interest rates are low, you take advantage and you do things that benefit low interest rates. Uh, and then when the interest rates are high, you're supposed to adjust. That's how. If you want to play the economy, that's what, that's how I've been told. That's how you're supposed to do it because it never stays the same. There's always pullbacks, kind of like mountains. You know, mm-hmm. there's ups and downs. So right now, with the interest rates were lower, uh, people were getting in. But all this to say, when the world starts getting back to normal, things are opening up. You have to go back to work. There's no more stimulus check. You're working for yourself. If you've budgeted with the current interest rates, but then interest rates go back to normal, which are way higher, let's say, than what you were used to but you're not making more and the government's not there to protect me anymore, isn't that going to cause some kind of weird ripple effect in our market here? So you think it's going to go, it's going to take um, uh, house prices down? I don't know if the house prices are going to go down or if people are just, there's going to be more foreclosed homes. But uh, anytime there's a, a jarring effect, I always expect to see that replicated in the real world. So if it's the interest rates that jar up or people's income, that goes down. I always feel like I'm. I should 
be able to see it physically in the real world, there's always a ripple effect. So what I'm wondering is, is that the ripple effect or I'm not, I might not even be seeing it correctly. There might be uh, something that I'm missing, which will help avoid that, a, cr a possible crash, even a crash. You, you are correct. In normal times, if the government and the Federal Reserve were not interfering in the markets to the extent that they are now. Okay, so there's That's interference from them, which is preventing the logical flow, the, the natural price. flow of things. Right. Okay. Do you think the stock market would have ripped uh, to new highs had there not been stimulus and massive spending by government? No. And impossible. We would have a crash and we, we would work out our debt. It would take a year or two and then we'll go back up again. But there would be tremendous pain during that time. I mean, the market could go down by 70%, 75 Like, then it would start coming back. People up. would starve, no? No, it would be, they'd suffer, but for a year or two, and then they come but back. But a year or two is a long time. A long time. Okay, a long time. It would, but because the debts were so high before that, they have to clear, okay? Now, that's not the case now. Now, like you said, like, if how it re interest rates, uh, you said, were going up, and now they're going to go down again, Okay. Why do you think... Or the opposite. I thought they were go they were down. Or they, it yeah, it was they easier. And, they went up, and now, yeah, they're they going went up. up. But I remember I, my thesis, the interest are going to go down now. Yeah, that's, uh, so this is why so I brought happens, it up. If interest rates go down, their house price is going to go even higher. Yeah. It's going to be the opposite of what you think. It's because I thought that they were going to go up. Yeah, but they're not. Because look, all the inflation trades, that all the inflation memes that came out didn't move the 10-year bond, which was the, 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 the benchmark, the Canary coal mine of inflation. Okay. If that's and in fact it's starting going to starting to go down, that means that they've already priced in the inflation that they think is going to happen. Now in the future it might change, but as of right now, th the market is saying to me, signaling to me that the inflation trade is done for now and it's going to go back down. So inflation rate, if inflation goes down and interest rates go down, housing prices and and you have interest rates. And this is again. U.S. and Canada. They kind of follow the same US pattern. First, but Canada is like it's like yes, it's the same. But when I say for the U.S., it'll happen in Canada too. In Canada, it's even stronger because Canada never had a, it kept going up. Yeah. Okay. But people think that there has to be a pullback. There has to be a pullback. Not in, not if this mechanics play out as they have been in the past. And by the way, it's not just a money printing thing in in Quebec in Canada as a whole. It's also a supply shortage. Nobody's building new houses, right? Maybe in, they're building condos, but houses. There's a, 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 a lack of supply and nobody's building new ones, so the prices can only go higher in the future. Put that with money printing? I don't think I don't see a house crash because of that. You think there should be a pullback? Why? Given these fundamentals, given the fact that the government is interfering, given the fact that nobody's building new houses, and we can go into that, that's also a government interference. They're not allowing houses to be built. Really? But, well, because they're not incentivizing. Like a lot of the residential real estate and stuff like that, nobody's building two duplexes, triplexes, or single unit homes. Why is that? Just to fit There's more no people in, in larger buildings? Like if you, the laws here make it very difficult for or, or landlords to make back their money as the, as the house price go up because you can't increase rents. Like the, the, the Riche de Logement uh, fa favors more the tenant than it does the, the landlord. So you have that going on. So you can't, as a landlord, you, you can't really renovate your house as much as you would want to. It, 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 the houses that you built are not going to be for the lower income or it'll be for richer people because you can increase rents easier. Uh, and the rules don't affect them as much. So, like, you have the rules in place in Canada by trying to protect the tenant, you end up, like, creating less of a supply for the people who need it the most, for lower... Income. Uh, income people and middle-income people, okay? And for the houses, like, I don't understand why houses aren't being built. I have no idea why you should be building more supply of houses. I have a theory. Because there's so many, many more people and everything has gone digital. Um, and I had... When I worked in virtual reality, because I, I used to have to read all these... Uh, Articles about the bleeding edge and and what's technology yes, moving bleed. forward. Yeah, the bleed. The first time it was just in VR where I, I heard the cloud. term bleeding edge. Yeah, I used to hear cutting edge, but then then it was bleeding edge. Uh, and I remember reading about how the planned future, because a lot of these people they orchestrate what they want the future to be. Uh, people that are um, either in tech in in front or economics or whatever it is, they have a vision of what the future should be, and they push things towards that. So a lot of the big VR play. Video games were using it, but it wasn't for video games. Mm. It was for uh, alternative living in a future world where your personal space is smaller than it ever was. And they kept using Japan as an example. Okay. They go, what's happening in Japan where they had to go up? They didn't have, let's say in Tokyo, they didn't have uh, enough space. Most major cities, whether they like it or not, that's where they're headed. So since people are going to be living and working in cities, 
They're going to have smaller living uh, quarters, is what they call them. Um, if we can keep upgrading our VR to be more realistic, uh, more immersive, and since people are getting more and more comfortable and used to paying for digital goods, we can get to a point where, yeah, their house is very small and there's nothing in it, but all their luxuries are in the VR world. When they get home, they enter the VR world, kind of like an avatar situation. And more and more, and I remember thinking, I go, who's going to... Like, there's limits to digital stuff. I go, like, fuck that. But I was wrong 100% because I was making fun of skins and all that. Nobody's going to pay for it. Where I was 100% wrong because they're yeah. making millions, if not billions, off that kind of shit. So it looks like in major cities, that's where they wanted to veer towards. That's why I'm saying, to me, I don't like it, but it does make sense why they would just build condos and smaller units and just fill it up. And the excuse is always, no, no, your vacation, you can get away wherever you want. You own that stretch of, of, of virtual digital world. You know, and then you meet up with your friends digitally. And we're slowly going towards it. We're, remember that, that movie, Ready Player One? Complete yes. nonsense movie. Yes. But there was little things in there where I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I remember we talked about that. I remember reading about like shit. Like, that's fucking weird. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're putting all their lives into their avatars yeah. and, and all that stuff. Yeah. So like, obviously the movies, they sensationalize it way more yeah. than what the actual planning is. But... There's a lot of people discussing. There's a lot of people discussing in the industry about that. And same thing with AR, augmented yeah. reality. The yeah. big play, the bigger play there, yes. wasn't just for your social stuff. It was for medical purposes, which was very good. Yes. Because uh, you could scan. You could scan. Um, uh, well, at the time, that's what we were talking about. I don't know if anyone's actually doing it now. But let's say a cup of coffee or a bottle. You scan it right away, and it tells you because it has your profile in there. Harry, you right now, because of what you ate in the morning, you could use this because it has the proteins you want, this and that. Avoid that because you're allergic to this, 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 That's this. Scary, right? It's scary. It's amazing. But these are the long, we're going to start seeing that more and more because we were talking about this five, six years ago. I think I was reading about stuff like this and we were looking at how we could apply it and what's, so this is all stuff that's in the works. Yeah. If not already being used somewhere. I think the pandemic accelerated stuff like that. For sure. I like brought it forward by five, 10 years, but you're right. These things are happening. Like uh, augmented AR, augmented reality is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, telemedicine. Yeah. How to use that for telemedicine. That was huge. That was nothing before. Now it's like nothing. I shouldn't say nothing. It was growing, but exponential growth. Remote surgeons. I remember that yes. about you can have, if there's the five best surgeons in the world, yes. but one of them is in fucking Dubai. The other one's in Russia. Malaysia, the other one's in yeah, Greece. Yeah, yeah. Well, virtual, they're in there and they're tapping because of the internet, gigabyte or 5G. They're, they're tapping into the actual surgery of someone in the US, an emergency yes. surgery, and they're feeling everything, the feedback, like yes. a PS5, huge. And, and they're doing it. So they're performing the surgery through robotics, through the internet, through VR, yeah. and they could save lives. Across. This is amazing. Yeah. These were the basis of science fiction yes. 50 years ago. Yes, I agree. And now we're, these are in testing. These are in practical use in some places. It's crazy where we're... I've always said, if a human being thought about it, eventually we'll make it happen. It might take hundred years like people have been thinking of flying forever like yeah a sub greek ancient greece it happened in uh, 1903 or something yeah but it's gonna happen people went to go to space we're gonna go to space yeah eventually. they're gonna figure it out yeah we're gonna colonize mars eventually it's gonna happen maybe a thousand years i don't know but it's gonna once we think about it we're that's why i love human ingenuity i love tech love all that stuff like for me when you're thinking about augmented reality and all that stuff as a trader how would you play it like are you going to buy those firms that could go bankrupt and, and you wait, they're just burning money up until they realize it and then they die and then some other new competitor makes it? Or like, to me, I would buy the, the, the hardware behind it, the, the semiconductors, the, 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 the cards. The, 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 you, you know what I'm researching? Like, the Ryzen, you know those Ryzen cards? Like, yeah, yeah, something the, like that. Graphics are, you know what I'm researching? I could be wrong, but I'm researching uh, what goes into memory for the future because mm. the biggest thing now is space capacity. Mm. That's why we're, you know, SSDs and we need this much a terabyte memory is the future because everything is stored whether because even cloud storage is not in the air you need servers to, to, so it's yes. memory so what i'm looking into is what is the memory of the future what's the sd card of the future mm -hmm. how fast how much capacity because that's what we're going to need because sooner or later when we're all really connected all that you're really going to be changing is adding more memory because your interface is going to be upgradable just like how we thought it was only the nerds soup up their pcs and whatever the future no. is you're all gonna soup, nerds. yeah. yeah. <laughs> the nerds are the few. The nerds just read it; they realize it before anyone else. Like why? The, just like car people. Yeah. Why the fuck would I get rid of the entire car when I just need this component and I'm in the future? Yes. You get it. So that's what it's gonna be. So memory, I think, is gonna be right. a huge play. What is the play on memory? I mean, five G is a play on memory. Yeah. We're increasing the capacity of our phones. Two G is nothing. Three G was not. Three G was a quantum leap over two G, right? Five G is the Internet of Things. Yeah. 5G is like you have to have a, a, a some kind of like a converter or, 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 or module every block 
because it's short range, right? So you have to have, it has to be- But it's instant. Trade. Yeah. It is for data mining. It is for, uh, so, okay. So here's another play. So years ago, and this was right, right before I got into VR and stuff. I remember there was a guy talking to me about a play that he wanted to do, but he just, and I was going to help him, but he just wasn't organized. A VR play, you're saying? Um, I call it an AR play. Um, and I wish he was more organized so we could have got into it, but I think eventually someone stole this idea because I think malls are going to start doing it now. For vo video games or what are you talking about? No, no, it was for um, what we do. So right now we all do it. We, his idea now exists because he waited too long, but you know how your phone has all your cards on it and you could just scan your card and go it? He, he was kind of thinking of that, but specifically for malls. But they expanded the idea and, and he didn't do it. Everyone else did it because he was waiting too long. You have to jump on these things. But one of the things that came from there that where then I saw it, they're doing, I think in the, like Dubai or some shit like that, you know, like the, the VR and the AR, the AR stuff rather to try clothes on. So you don't actually have to go into the room. Mm -hmm. So he, his idea was then expanded upon because someone else got to think about it and your cards, everything is on your phone. So all you need is your phone when you walk out of the house, technically, okay. and you can go shop, you could do all you want. But your current phone or a, a higher level one? Well, currently, you could do it with your current phone. I just don't do it. I don't put my cards on my phone, but you could put all your cards on your phone digitally. You could just scan it. Uh, phones have really, they're becoming the all-in-one, they're becoming glitch from Reboot. <laughs> but there's something that malls haven't learned how to use yet that they should, which is like the 5G, the Internet of Things. Yes. They, you should have a profile in malls, which um, then could send you, when you walk into a mall, hey, Pantelis, welcome. I know that you like 11 and a half size shoes or That's 13 like size shoes. Yeah, uh, come over to Foot Locker. We'll give you, there's a sale on these Adidas. I know you like yeah. Adidas. I know you like Nike, whatever the fuck it is. Targeted advertising. Targeted yeah. advertising to your phone. Yeah. Uh, special discounts, that you, and when you walk into a store, maybe mm, welcome, welcome back, Pantels. You know, shit like that. That's the future. That's what's. Uh, okay. uh, that's like a, a huge. Uh, you're probably right. You know, but what about the privacy elements? What about the? What if one person controls that stuff? Like that's that's what I would. So that's the However, danger. That to me is like. It's irrelevant to making money. If it's gonna happen, you have to go with it. You know what I mean? Like I'll I, tell you how I, I feel. Yeah, go ahead. I am more of a privacy, individual liberties type of guy. Me so too. I would rather have privacy than have the comfort of a robot telling me that my shoes are in. Yes. A hundred percent. However, you could opt out of it, right? You can. You should be able to opt out of it. However, I do believe that the way the world is going and the way people don't give a fuck anymore about their privacy, about their rights. Everyone's public. Everyone has their 15 minutes of fame online. Everyone's on Instagram. Everyone's on Instagram. They're, they're sharing personal stuff. Very personal, personal stuff. Yeah. I just broke up with him. No, no, no. And it's like, dude, that's none of my business. Don't tell me that. So everyone is super, super public. So I don't think that's going to be a barrier. I, I think agree. people would welcome it. I agree. We're going to welcome our robot overlords. I agree. Because uh, people don't understand like freedom. Back no. Then. Like they're, they're willing to share everything like you said. They don't understand how it can get very um, dictatorial very quick. I mean, look, we, we had a taste of that in Quebec with the pandemic. Like for no reason, we, we were treated like uh, slaves or whatever. Yeah. After, we, we were the bad guys. We were the bad guys. For yeah. some reason. We have... We had stuff. I mean, not to get too political, but we have, uh, um, we've lost the element of uh, individual liberty and rights. People will say it will pick community rights over individual rights. Right? That sounds good, but that is a recipe for like getting into very authoritarian structures yeah. like socialism and stuff like that because it's good for the community, but it doesn't work in real life. You know, you need to target the individual. I think, like you said, everything is targeting the individual. Even businesses target the individual. You should be able to control your own avatar, your own image. Like, I don't like Facebook because Facebook should be paying you for the stuff that it takes from you. Yeah, it takes a lot and, it tries to, and then it sells that information. Sells that. You should give me a cut of that. There should yeah. be a law that says, if there was a law that says, I as, I as an individual control everything about me and whether you want to target advertising to me, and you have to pay every company that does that, especially like when you walk through the mall and they say, I target this, they have to pay you a certain amount to do that? Yeah, that would make sense. That would make sense. I would have, because then you can say yes or no or whatever. That's perfectly fine. But if you go down that road, you, you might be going down the path of like two or three or four corporations like having an oligopoly over stuff, you know? And that to me is like, for personal liberties is bad, but if I were an investor, I would have to invest in those companies. Because that would be to, where the future is. You have then. to disassociate yourself from what's good or bad and go where the trend is going, you know? So that's what I do with my trading as well and my investing. So well, it's like me with Palantir. I don't Palantir. like, yeah. I, I like the company. It's a great fund. It's a great company. I don't like the fact that it's part of the monitoring everything uh, revolution. Uh, though some of the uses are with fucking- With military. With military. But yeah, with stuff. some of the uses are incredibly cool. It's like super, like the Gotham stuff is, is like super futuristic Batman level uh, yes. shit. However, I don't like the spy tech, but I know that that's where we're headed. 
I know that information is the future. So I'm like, all right, if I'm going to put somebody in tech, I'll put somebody in these guys because it's the future. It's the future I don't like, but I know that that's the future. Like I could, I agree. I could tell uh, data is huge. Yeah. yeah. But there's a time and place for everything. Like you are correct in the long term, but in the meantime, if you invest in these companies, oh, I got to wait, you could get killed. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can get destroyed. You don't know. You have to like you have to be smart about it. It's not as easy as just having a view. Then you have to research it. Like what um, the way I trade is I have a macro view of how the world is. And then I go to the, ma the, the midterm and then I go for the stock. Like I told you, like back in October when I saw the inflation trade, I said, there's going to be an inflation trade. We, we were in a deflationary environment. We are always in a deflationary environment in, in the world. Okay, that's a secular, we are in sec secular or disinflation, I should be more accurate, with periodic spikes of inflation depending on wh what governments do and how heavy they want to do it. But we're not in inflation. We, we have a tendency to go down, okay? And I have that view. Uh, and then I say, okay, now that we have, we're going to get inflation, what's going to win? Yeah. Then I go in there. And then I, I cut it down. Okay, what's going to, okay, I've got oil. I'm going to this, then I cut into, oh, I'm going to put into this oil company because it seems to be the best. So you say I go from, pack, I chisel it down, chisel it down, chisel it down. That's how I view things, okay? I don't say, oh, I like AMC, I'm going to buy it. I mean, you could win, but you don't know how you won. Like, you don't right, know. Right, you, you, it's more like, like, I like the fact that we're opening up. I like the fact that people are talking about going to movie theaters. For example, I'm saying if that was the case. Uh, there's a movie theater here with no debt, which is not the case. AMC is completely rattled. Uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. You have to really chisel it down. But about the housing, because I think we forgot about. Yes. So what you said is interesting. So if the government is stepping in and yes. they're kind of propping things up when the government has, stepped. has to step. I'm not saying they're doing the bad thing. I'm just saying no, because ha has already stepped in I'm because saying. they've no, stepped in. No, no, but because they've stepped in yes. and they're not letting the nature of things run its course, then doesn't that also incentivize the fact that there's not going to be any houses built? Like you said, regular homes or duplexes, because right now the way it's working, everyone's making money off it. Why would you not change everyone. things? Not everyone, right? Exactly. Why would you change? Why would you change things if right now things are working the way they are? Where, as if you would have to create a new neighborhood, let's say, expand, create a new neighborhood with uh, duplexes and single-family homes. Whatever's in demand, you, you don't get to decide. It's whatever the the market wants. If but, you need single-family homes, build single-family. But homes. it would look right now like the market is demanding more condos, more because that's what's selling. Good. Yeah. Let them do that. And then there's going to be a there's too many too much supply of condos. The price are going to go down. They're going to build something else. But however. But I feel like we adapt. So like humans, yes. even though let's say you want a house for your family, you'll settle for the condo. So because of that, it's not like there's a hearing where it's like, do we need help? People are like, no, we just need homes to live in. Well, they will react with, that, with whatever's going on, but that doesn't mean that what is going on is correct. Okay? Right, right. And like you said that everybody wins. I don't think everybody wins. Even the people who, only the people who own property are winning. But even then, are they winning? Because if they sell and they have to buy a new house, it'll be just as expensive. Oh, as yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Are yeah. you really winning? And who's who's dying? Who's not winning? And it's like, what about the 30-year-old who just found a job and wants to start a family? The house is too expensive. The house is like eight times, as in, nine times his income, where in the 70s, 80s, it's maybe two times his income. Yeah. It's not affordable anymore for, for the younger families to start buying these houses. They would have to get in tremendous debt. It's like students now. Even doctors have to take on a lot of student debt, and their doctors in the 40s and 50s still haven't paid off their student debt. You know, I mean, you're a doctor, but you you have this debt overhang you. Like, I mean, like, it's just too much, I think. But what it's can be done for that? The reason it's going to continue is because of these government policies that are just inflating the prices up with, with like, look, I hate to say it, but we shouldn't have printed money. We I, I had know. the crash. We should have had a crash. And But, but wouldn't, have people, wouldn't have too many people suffered if yes, that happened? Yes, they would have suffered. So the government almost, ha like, that's how I played. The government had to do it. So even though... Economically, you should let things out because in economics, if you let things play out, it will turn out better in the long run. There will be a crash for one or two years, but then we'll be even higher now, and it won't be with debt. It would be with real economic growth, which is much more sustainable over 50, 100 years. But sac now, the sacrifice happen. of human life would have been... No, you're not going to sacrifice... People could suffer for one or two years. It depends. They it's did. In the Great Depression, they suffered even more. But even but yeah. now, like already, there's a. I mean, I'm not advocating for it, but... No, no, I know, but he, he had a study on here in Quebec. I think, what is it, 40% of kids... Go to school hungry or shit like that. Like it's we terrible. already, and this was before, this was pre-pandemic. Yeah. So already we were teetering. So if, if this happened and the government didn't step in and terrible. it, it would have been. But the government has already stepped in and had school programs, everything, the school, we have free schools. and they've do, They're already doing it and yet it still exists. Why? Because you're circumventing the market mechanism. Okay. It, yes, you're feeding the kids, but then any other, any small problem, the kids still will still starve. You're, yeah, you're yeah. being dependent on the government program. So it's like, is it good really? Like, if, is welfare good, really? I mean, you're helping the poor temporarily, but then you're making things more expensive and then 
for them in the future, and you are uh, making it so that you have generations of people on welfare. Like the, the you have the daughter, the mother, and the grandmother is on welfare. But that wasn't the plan, right? That's just no, if, if it turns out that way, yeah. Correct. All government plans are done as a safety good net. Yeah. Okay, but you don't understand that when you circumvent market mechanisms, you will cause more damage than you're trying to heal, than you're trying to cure in the long run. And this is why we have these problems. I think we're we're, not, we're a society that is choking in debt right now, choking. And every bi- Japan, uh, Europe, the states now it didn't used to be. Even China, China before, in 2008, China almost had no debt. Now they're like 100% of GDP or something. Really? All, all the ma- huge debt uh, printing, money printing in, in China. I know that they're money printing like huge. crazy. I know that. So the four major drivers that drove the economy in the past are now levered to the hilt. That's deflationary because now they have to service that debt. They have to do something to get rid of it. How do you do that? You either inflate it away or you have a massive deflation, like a, a massive um, Great Depression. So what they want to do is they, wanna, they want inflation. They want to do it, but we're... We have a huge deflationary force that's pulling us down, but they want to go up to inflation. It's very difficult. The government now, because of what they've been doing for so long, are in a very tight spot, and so is every central bank. But do they all have to work together? Because it won't. They're doing that now. Because right they won't work around the world yeah. if one person decides, "Fuck it, let's they've go." They've already been trying to do that, but there's only so much it'll go to, and then you make it. It works for a little while, and then you get to the point now you have a global problem. <laughs> like you shifted the blame to this guy. You shifted it up. You shifted it up. Now you're at the global level. So globally, they have to agree and like, look, we're going, we're playing the inflation play because we can't let you decide uh, to let yourselves crash because then it's going to affect all of us. We're all connected. We're all going to be trying to pull up while you're destroying us. It'll fuck everything up. So they have to come into an agreement. But what do you think is going to happen? Like if you're the government and you've already screwed things up to the level that you've made debt so high, your monetary system is a fiat currency system, which is only survives if you keep printing more money, more money, more money. And you have the debts rise, 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 rise up. It's amazing for 40 years. Because you're starting from zero. Now you ha- you're at a point where you've maximum, almost maximum. I don't know, make it go higher, who knows. But you're at a very high point. Okay, what would you do? Would you let that, would you let your, the, those debts crash from such a high point where everybody's going to hate you and never, never vote you back in? Yeah. Or will you do it stealthily with increasing inflation to inflate away the debts? What would you do if you were a government official? And those are my two choices. Yeah. And you're going to, remember, you're thinking like a trader. How would you take it? Yeah. What are your two choices? If those are my two, because I, I know what my, pl- I, I only have a very simple view of if i was in charge of the country what i would do and mine always uh goes around taxes what i would do is i would want to lower income taxes uh to incentivize people to work rather than to collect uh, because they'll keep more of that money and then they'll have more buying power you get it and the money that we're actually going to be getting from taxes and we're going to be giving to actual programs because instead of having a, a generation of people who are like i'm gonna make more money staying at home you're going to have less of those. Who are like, no, no, I'd rather work because I'm going to make more money. They're not so keeping half my money. You want to force them to work. So I w- it's kind of forcing them right. to work because I'm incentivized. I go, well, look, you're going to make more money working than you are staying at home. You so just a, work. You brought up a perfect point of which I forgot to mention is that there's another way of getting rid of your debt is to grow your way out of it. Grow your GDP so that your debt to GDP goes lower. But we're at the point where debt is so high that it's tough to grow out of it because you have to put a lot into servicing the debt. Yeah. So that money that you said I'm going to save, it has to go. some of that has to go to paying down the debt. So you're like... You know, you make certain sacrifices, but for me, the biggest thing I'd be scared of is I saw a lot in this year, and our own friends, we talked about it, where with uh, the stimulus check, yes, um, people that I know Did now that own or? rents, uh, I didn't get stimulized. I didn't get stimulized. Well, we I wasn't allowed to get stimulized for most of the time anyway. Oh, yeah, because uh, uh, you're your own uh, employer. I'm my own. I'm, I'm, I'm a real own. boy. <laughs> um, but it doesn't matter because my big thing was just I always want, if you can work, I'd rather work. But my biggest thing is they stop me from working, right? They especially podcasting when they're like you can't bring guests, you can't do this, which really pissed me off. Yeah, you know. Well, how long was that? That so was like like a six month period at least. That's a huge. No, that was a huge. Uh, for in the beginning, you couldn't have anyone because we locked everything down. But then after it was that six month period, yeah. which was huge for me because yeah. I still have to pay rent. Yeah. But you can't. I, my business can't operate. But you want me to pay rent. Yeah. But my biggest thing was people who right now they're like, no, we're still. Uh, it's still better for me to not go to work. So we have friends that own restaurants and they're just desperately trying to find employees and people are like, I'm not coming back to work. Yeah, I'm making more money staying at I'm home. I'm making more money staying at home. Are you crazy? And Why would I come? And you're wondering why real estate prices are going up. But that's what I'm telling you. It's like it's, I would make it so and i understand them too so what would they're you like, like why would it's i v- it's very tough it's a very it's tough very job. tough but what I, you're doing there's gonna have another consequence to what you're doing but i understand them because I, I understand where they're coming from i'm not saying it's right or wrong it's not up to me to make the decision but i understand when when you're telling me i could stay home and i can make roughly the same that i would make working for you for 40 hours a week and the government putting his hand in my fucking pocket fuck you the government i'll let him give me i get that that's why i would take less from people make it reasonable 
so that they're like, mm, actually, overall, I'm going to keep more if I work, right? Mm -hmm. So now you're starting to have a percentage, less, 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 less that you're paying every month because now they're going to work and they're giving you some of that money. Okay. So I'm making money in the sense that I'm paying out less. I'm getting more now because they're actually working. They're yes. giving me money. Yeah, they're not giving me what they would have, but it doesn't matter because now I just have to function. And I would reduce I would reduce government. I think the government is too big. Uh, we don't need this many representatives. We, we, just, we just need people to be working for you to make sure that the country could run. And that's it. We don't need a dictator. I don't need fucking... 80 people, like bureaucracy, do we, doing the same fucking job. Do we need a government in the time of the internet? And like, do we need representation? Can't we represent ourselves now? Digitally? Well, we could, I but like I think that would get a little like, crazy. Or like pass, like something where like, we don't need that many people, just maybe one person or two to manage that system. We need, to ex thank you very much. We need to change the system, whereas right now we still have a mentality of old Britain where the government is the ruling class. That needs to change. 100%. They're servants, they're doing, and servants, and I don't mean it in a bad way, but I mean they're doing a job. It should be shifted to an employee-employer. We're the employer because we're paying into it, mm. and they're the employees. They should be held accountable by us, yeah. not by some non-elected well, governor the, general. That You're saying the, that's the U.S. Constitution. Like the, I know, the that's why I, I love, dude, yes. the, the American, we, we, people like to point, they make fun, yes. but America figured it out up until these fucking companies and lobbyists took over the country. So no, the people that are in these, uh, in the Senate, they're no longer representing the exactly. constituents. They're representing um, company X, company Y. That's when it fucked and up. it's a big, a big tech, big oil. Huge, big, big are being represented. But yeah. if it was but not the, for the, them. The founding fathers never intended. Never intended. That's what I'm saying. If it wasn't for that, if it, they were representing their, dude, that's the best form of government that we figured out so far in humanity. Okay. It's just that when we figure something good out, obviously the other cocks somebody, screws, we, it somebody screws it up. So now you had these companies like, wait a second. You mean I could? I could pay money. They could represent me and I could weed out my competition. I could get stuff, move faster. Fuck that. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going in. So that's where we screw up. I don't up. blame them. If I was a guy like that, if I was a company and I could find ways out, to, I could yeah. do, if I could do that, but if it was written in some law that the government cannot give corporations money, or like you can't get special favors from me, then we'd fine. Because every company would want to, like if I had a small company, I would want to have government help to eliminate my competition. But if I couldn't get that, if it was against the law to do that, no problem, I think. We'd have no problem. I think we need a hybrid. That's why I'm saying we need a smaller government because I don't mind social uh, socialist policies. I love socialist policies because I like the idea that we've made it to the point where in society and in technologically and we've advanced so to far. Help, to help the lower level. To help the lower level so that it doesn't stay the lower level and it could move up. A yeah. safety net, if you will. Yeah. The problem is it's in the guise of socialism, Like we're, but we're not. We're just... We just keep people down so that we can stay on top. Like the government wants to rule, so they keep people down. There's no, it's not really a helping hand. It's more of a, you're kind of staying in this pool. Well, there's stay no helping here. hand. There's, there's, no, no, there's not even a ladder. They, they just exactly. Do it for there's no ladder. It, they do it for themselves. What I like is the fact that I, I don't mind paying taxes if I know that there's no way that my neighbor's kid, no matter what, if my neighbor loses his job, whatever, there's no way that they go hungry. Then I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll pay taxes. I don't mind. That's that's a community thing. That's a human being in, in the year 2000 something mentality. I'm fucking all but for it. We can it. do that without income tax. We could do that without it. This is this, but because this is the thing. But you have to get rid of everything else. All they, the other crap. They trick you into thinking that that's what you're doing now, and but they're not doing that. There's people that are they're, and they're just throwing money at these different organizations and systems that aren't working, and they're not really taking care of what needs to be taken care of. That's why I get mad because I hear people like, "No, I don't want to take care of the neighbor. Fuck him if he falls." No, no, I'm not like that. Are you crazy? We're human beings. We're not animals. I'm all for it. There's a no, but even if the guy didn't want to take care of his neighbor, like, well, then you can't get the benefits of the government uh, program. Like, you should be able to opt out as well. I want to, you have to have, for me, it's like personal freedom. I like that. You know? I like personal freedom, but I love, I love to know that um, because, because I'm contributing, let's say, to my community, to my grassroots, because I'm contributing, there's no chance of someone living in 2020, in but they time. live as if they're in the 1800s. Yeah, yeah. I'm fucking all for that. The problem is that's not what's happening, especially with the money that goes into these the salaries of government employees. And we have so many representatives, not just at the federal level, but even provincially. It's just absurd to me. It's like we're spending so much money yeah. for them to meet after meet and eat. And fuck, it, it kills me when I think I, about shit like that. I, I heard a statistic that in the States, like um, 60 cents of every dollar that goes to government gets eaten up by the government, the bureaucracy. It's crazy. And only 40% goes to the actual intent of that program. It's crazy. I it's mean, if a charity operated that way, it wouldn't be called, a charity has to give 90% of what it takes to, to be called a charity. Cause. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should do everything to charities. Maybe. <laughs> charity for energy, charity for, uh, you know, defense. 
I don't. It's whoever runs it more properly. Because yeah. people are like, oh, you need the government. Who's like? I keep hearing people say, without the government, who would build roads? But you guys know that the government yeah. isn't building the roads, right? It's still <laughs> private companies. The government isn't. What do you think? You think Biden is building a? He's paving a road. What are you guys talking about? Right. It's just crazy. Yeah, but we're building loads, not by income tax. We're building it by the gas tax that we have and, and, and property tax. And how are we building it? Not by magic. You're paying yeah, people some to do the job. Yeah. You're contracting someone to do the job. It's just, I don't know. Uh, but stock play, if you want to give people advice, because like we said, people are not, they don't really know what's going on. It's, there's a lot of misinformation. What would you suggest people starting out look into now? Oh, you mean like uh, for educational purposes? Educational, and if they were going to put their money into maybe not a specific stock, if you don't feel comfortable about one stock, but uh, a play. Okay, well, I can't give financial advice. You no, know, this, these are, these are speculations. My, my, just yeah, my, what these I are our do. opinions, yeah. Okay, but first, like, my goal is to, like, I mean, thank you for having me. My goal is to have financial literacy for all. Yeah. Okay? Because like we said, we're having this political conversation about how things are getting very, very bad, prices are getting very high, and we can't count on government anymore to help us attain our goals, especially when you're a young couple and you want to go to retirement and you want to live a nice life, not have to go to work at Starbucks when you're 60 or 70 years old. You know? Yeah. And for that, I think the only way out of that is not by government giving you a social benefit or something like that or uh, giving you a pension because pensions are useless right now, right? It's you have to get wealthy yourself. The only way out is to get wealthy and the only way to do that is financial literacy, okay? And... There are many ways to do it. There, you don't have to go to the stock market and specific picks. There, you can. Act, there's like passive portfolios that can be constructed that are very good for the average person. Okay, and it's very simple. You don't have to go pay a lot of money to your financial advisor that he charges you two, three percent from mutual funds that they sell. You know, it's it's a very simple f- formula to get wealthy and to build your wealth over time, over 10, 20, 30 years without taking a lot of risk. Okay. Um, that could be done. We can discuss that later because it take, it'll take yeah, yeah. a big, a big time. Might bring time you back for that. Yeah, yeah, and but like, you know, I. You have to get financially literate, literate yourself. Period. Okay. And so the biggest thing right now is that people don't really know how finances work, how their finances are supposed to work. Yes. Or and in this time, like you were saying, I think that house price should go down because of this. Yeah, but that's not how things work. You have to understand the mechanics behind it before it goes there. So you're not, you're not, you don't want to be the sucker. Yeah. You'll yeah. be the guy holding the bag at the end of the, at the end of the day, because you have one life to live. And when you're 60, you can't go back to when you're 20 and make the mistakes and make, uh, and you know, correct Take, your mistakes. Yeah. yeah. So that's what, like, that's what I wanted. I wanted like financial literacy for everybody to do it so we can literally get rid of this financial industry uh, advisory services that are not really getting people to where they want to be. Some, sometimes, yes, like if you already have a lot of money, you have a million dollars, you might get three million. Most people don't though. Yeah, but then they should have had, that guy who had a million who got three should have had six. You know what I mean? That's how the industry sort of like chisels you, gets little one. But everyone year. else, they're going to always be stuck in, in the rat race. Yeah, And you, unfortunately, like you, got successful because you learn stuff on your own, right? You have to know stuff. You have to learn, you have to do it a little bit on your own. You have to understand how things work. Yes, you might be able to farm it out to somebody else, but at least know what he's doing. At least know that he's not putting you into a trap, into right. whatever, or is he smart enough? Is, is he there to line his own pockets or does he really care about what you are? Because we can go through all the statistics and what they're telling you is not actually true. When they say the stock market gives you seven, nine, seven to 9%, let's say 7% for the next 20 years, do you think you're gonna get 7% a year? No, you're not gonna get that, you're gonna get less. Okay, because they're taking an average. That's not how it really happens because you have ups and downs. You can lose 20%, you can make 10. But those things average out to seven, but that doesn't, per year. But that doesn't mean you're going to get 7% over 20 years. Yeah. You're probably going to get three. And then inflation will probably eat that away. So people say, oh, I should have a million dollars if I retire, if I do this, but they end up having like 400,000 or 600,000. And by then 600,000 is not even worth anything. Yeah, yeah. our 600,000 today yeah, in 30 years, is not going to be so worth. Yeah. You think 600,000 30 years is going to be worth something? I don't know. Maybe you can buy a car with that. I don't know. In the year uh, 2050. We're going to have to adjust the numbers if that happens. <laughs> yeah. We can't do this wheelbarrow shit. Yeah. It's a big lie that the financial industry is trying to perpetrate on the people that you can retire wealthy if you do these things. It's it's not that easy. Well, okay. are you going to be, because you told me you want to have more of a, um, because you've been keeping a lot of these secrets to yourself and you've been making <laughs> yourself wealthy, uh, but you want to help people become more literate. So you're going to be online more. Yeah. I, I, I just opened up a new Twitter, a new Twitter for my uh, The link is in the description so people yes. could follow you. Yes. And, and you're going to be posting stuff there? I'll be posting stuff, or sharing my thoughts, sharing what, what, you know, maybe mistakes they will make during trading. Maybe I might uh, sell, um, trade some um, of my political thoughts as well, not just trading, but uh, I'm just going to keep it so 
and if, if people have questions, they could either DM me. I could ask answer their questions or they have problems or whatever. Yes, no problem. I would, I would be happy to do that. This is a good move because I've benefited from you greatly knowing you and uh, having your brain at my disposal because you understand this stuff. You have a, just your way of... St- but you've been doing it for years. You used to work for one of the big banks well, and then you decided to go by yourself, which was the best move you ever did. Yes. Um, and to have other people being able to benefit from your mind, I think is going to be a big thing. So follow Harry. Links in the description. Harry's going to be back anyway. This isn't the last we've seen of him. You guys have been asking me to bring my stock guy, as you call him, uh, repeatedly. So now he's here. So I want want to make you more of a like a recurring guest especially when there's something that's going on in the market something big and uh one day hopefully you'll feel comfortable and you start your own goddamn podcast oh, really and you'll be I, I would just <laughs> weekly man you do a half hour weekly you go online you have your little setup you talk you tell them this is what i think is going to happen this week blah 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 move forward people right. will benefit benefit you'll benefit i think it's great thank you harry thank you. thanks for being here remember to subscribe links are in the description uh go fuck yourself Welcome everybody to the thoughts of my head All my confessions are the latest trend I'll post them on my feed for you all soon